are times when you might feel aimless and can't see the places where you belong, but you will find that there is a purpose. It's been there within you all along, and when you're near it, you can almost hear it. It's like a symphony. Just keep listening, and pretty soon you'll start to figure out your part. Everyone plays a piece in their own melodies, and each one of us, oh, it's glorious. To let it ring out as you discover who you are. Others around you will start to wake up to the sounds that are in their hearts. It's so amazing what we're all creating. It's like a symphony. Just keep listening, and pretty soon you'll start to figure out your part. Everyone plays a piece in their own melodies, and each one of us, oh, is glorious. Keep listening, and pretty soon you'll start to figure out your part. Everyone plays a piece in their own melodies, and each one of us, oh, is glorious.
Howard J. Ruff, one of the hottest talk show hosts in the country, author of a best-selling book that's ringing up record sales, how to prosper during the coming bad years. And more and more people are putting their trust in Howard Ruff's inflation-proofing message. Some half a million households tune into his syndicated TV talk show, Ruff House, every week. The paperback edition of his bestseller promises to outsell the hardcover version when it hits the stands early next year. His newsletter, Rough Times, is booming with more than 100,000 subscribers. And that all adds up to millions of believers in the bottom line of Ruff's philosophy to beat our rough economic times. Take Will Rogers' advice. Will Rogers, the great economist, 1920s, he said, invest in inflation. It's the only thing that's going up. I think the thing I like the most about my life is uh, my family. That gives me more satisfaction than anything I have in my life. And, my, and, I, and I guess along with that is the fact that my kids are proud of me and they respect me for what I'm doing. And, and you can take all the rest of it and throw it away. If I can keep that, I wouldn't care what else happened. Pretty hard to take yourself seriously when you come home and you've just done the Merv Griffin show and you've been a radio and television audience has cheered you and people have asked for your autograph and old ladies have kissed you and you rush in. So, ah, here I am and Patty says, Dad, can I have the keys to the car? This week, a Rough House special takes a look at the precarious world economy and offers you some advice that could save your life. Please join us. Back again with Governor Reagan, having a most pleasant chat. I find the governor uh, an amazingly uh, uh, intelligent man simply because he, did, he agrees with most of what I think. And I think anybody <laughs> agrees with me, he's got to be smart, Governor. Uh. Noted economic commentator Howard Ruff is back in town this week, ready to talk money to his many followers. By design, his Rough Times convention coincides with Economic Awareness Week here in San Diego. The designation came from Mayor Pete Wilson during the regular city council meeting. Afterwards, Howard Ruff himself addressed council members praising the city's enactment of a spending limit. We think it is totally fitting that we come to one of the few fiscally responsible units, political units in this country, which is the city of San Diego. Ruff has made San Diego his convention city, attracting thousands to the annual Ruff Time Seminar. Balancing the budget is a worthy cause. Cutting government spending is absolutely imperative. But neither of these objectives will be achieved until we have some kind of a national consensus about whose ox gets gored. Now, the liberals have their favorite causes, and so do the conservatives. And they generally have enough votes to block each other's budget-cutting zeal. Now, I don't believe that we will see an end to the money creation process without a political upheaval in this country, which I don't see on the horizon. So I would suggest you plan your future on the assumption that inflation will continue because I see nothing to indicate otherwise. I'm Howard Ruff. New book now called Making Money, Winning the Battle for Middle Class Financial Success. It's a battle often fought, and so Howard Ruff is a welcome guest again today on Take Two. Thanks for joining us, Mr. Ruff. Thank you. Renaming his newsletter, The Ruff Times, Howard Ruff's Financial Success Report. But now, The Ruff Times is back, and once again, Howard Ruff is predicting a massive depression. Welcome to Take Two. It's not Thank quite you. time to jump out the window yet, is it? Oh, no. No, never will be time. There's never time to jump out the window. <laughs> now, there's... Uh... You know, there's a, a Chinese character, meaning crisis, is made up of two other Chinese characters, which are danger and opportunity. And uh... a blind bunny rabbit was once hopping down a trail, and he bumped into a snake. He apologized, and he said, Sir, I'm sorry, I've been blind since birth. I didn't know where I was going. And the snake said, Well, I'm sorry, too. I've been blind since birth. What are you? The bunny rabbit said, I don't know. I've never seen myself in the mirror. The snake said, well, I'll feel you and see if I can identify what you are. So he felt him and he said, well, you have long whiskers and a wiggly nose and great big ears and huge hind feet and a powder puff tail. And the rabbit said, wow, I'm a bunny rabbit. And the snake said, that's terrific, but what am I? And the rabbit said, I'll feel you and find out, see if we can figure it out. And he felt him. He said, well, you're long and slimy and scaly and you have beady eyes and a forked tongue. And the snake said, wow, I'm a lawyer. Now, in case anyone thinks I am prejudiced against lawyers, <laughs> perish forbid. <laughs> I have one son-in-law I'm supporting in law school and a daughter who wants to go, so, you know, sometimes you just can't get them turn out right. <laughs> <laughs> now, <laughs> 
Growing up without a father uh, didn't seem tough at the time because my mother was terrific. You know, I, I never missed my dad because uh, my mother was such a wonderful mother. She was a, uh, she, in fact, that has given me such immense respect for women who through no fault of their own are forced to make a living and raise children. These are brave and noble people in my opinion. And my mother was right in the forefront of these wonderful people. Uh, she gave me my values, taught me the basic principles of honesty and integrity, which I'm trying to teach my children. I moved to Utah for several reasons. I moved here because when I was attending BYU, I'd learned to love this valley. I loved the values of the community, and I said, someday I'm going to raise some kids in this valley. I also moved here because I wanted a community that where I didn't have to, in the home, try to offset the strange values that might be taught my children in the schools. The values of the community in the schools are the same. I love the outdoors. The kids love the skiing, but I love the fishing. I love to sit in the patio in the back of my house and watch the sun set on Maple Mountain behind us. Uh, I love going down to the park on Pioneer Day with a thousand other people in this little town all day long having a terrific time, start with the bishop's breakfast and the children's parade. I'm really kind of an old-fashioned guy. With success, Ruff has found the opportunity to pursue some long-deferred interests. Howard's love of music and singing has endured, and he recently revived his singing career. A professionally produced album directed to his subscribers contains a selection of songs that echo the values and ideals of Ruff's writings and allows him to communicate his innermost feelings in a manner uniquely his own. Even though there are only four children now at home, including one adopted, the rough household is never without activity. Sundays are a homecoming day for the family, and dinner time can find as many as 18 or more assorted roughs of varying age, gender, and temperament gathered around the dinner table. And any day of the week may bring dozens, if not hundreds of people, to enjoy the rambling property with all of its amenities. Over the years, I've tried to teach my children that when you are given much, much is expected of you and have a responsibility to share. And the Lord has blessed us uh, abundantly. So we decided when we moved into this community and built on the things we wanted to have, the, the swimming pool, the racquetball court, the tennis court, even the horses in the barn, that we were going to uh, open this up to our friends uh, that don't have these kinds of things. Uh, and so the, this is kind of the community country club. I don't think we quite intended it to be as extensive as it was, but it's worked out fine. And, and we have a schedule by the telephone. When people call up and say, is the racquetball court busy? We look next Wednesday, we look at the schedule and sign them up. We do make the provision that if the family wants to use it, they all, we can cancel theirs. We've even had to set up uh, uh, rules and <laughs> instructions and guidelines. But I think it's terrific. And I want my children uh, to always remember that we shared. I think that's part of the spirit within which we take foster children into the home. We have been blessed. The Lord expects much of us. I think the community has the right to expect much of us, and we're doing our best to meet that responsibility. Sometimes in the morning when shadows are deep, I lie here beside you just watching you sleep. And sometimes I whisper what I'm thinking of My cup runneth over with love Sometimes in the evening When you do not see I study the small things you do constantly I memorize moments that I'm fondest of my cup Run it over with love In only a moment we both will 
will be old. We won't even notice the world's turning cold. And so in this moment, with sunlight above, my cup runneth over with
Next comes our son, Ivan. Ivan passed away in a drowning accident in our pool back in uh, 1968, a year in which I lost my business uh, through f failure and was forced into bankruptcy and our son died. But I can honestly say that that event, which for the first time helped me to, uh, reminded me of my own mortality, was perhaps a major turning point in my life and a positive event as the years have subsequently shown. And he's changed my whole perspective on life and death. Because, I, so because of Ivan, I no longer fear death, because I know that my son is waiting to greet me. And I, can also, I also know that my job on this planet is to live my life in such a way that I will be worthy to be with that pure spirit that our Heavenly Father called home. And felt him 